Hello. This module is about analyzing unsteady processes. We have already encountered a number of different kind of systems. Uh, for instance, if we try to classify all types of systems, we know systems can be closed or open based on possibility of mass transfer and and the closest and both closed and open system can be either steady or unsteady in other words there is no other possibility so that is a comprehensive classification no matter what system you encounter it has to be either a closed steady system closed unsteady system open steady system or open unsteady system well we have already uh, gone through great details of a closed steady system in module 2 we have also gone very rigorously in module 4 over open steady system and in this chapter we will talk about mostly closed unsteady system but in your textbook you will find also uh, a good discussion of on open unsteady system okay so let's go with an animation to establish a closed unsteady system okay there we go so let's pause the animation first of all the system is closed as you can see there is absolutely no mass going in or out but there is all these other kind of interactions heat and heat and work interactions and the system is even though it's closed and even though the color is uniform <coughs> the system can evolve with time as you can see if i run the animation look at the color changing so don't worry about the equation for the time being the color change tells you what that the system is unsteady at a given point things are changing with time a color change reflects change of state however this is a special kind of system we'll assume the system is uniform that is uh, you know if you if you have a if you have a local system here and local system there suppose system subsystem a and this is these are local subsystems and if you watch those two subsystems you can see that the color in each system is changing with time however there is no change f between a and b are reflected by the same thermodynamic equilibrium so that that allows us to make a lot of simplification okay so let's go to the let, let's go and see how we simplify the equation so first of all this is an unsteady system but we'll be interested in, in in unsteady system where there's a beginning state and a final state in other words the system goes from here to there that's the hallmark of a process sometimes we can be interested in how things are changing in a unsteady system continuously but those problems are rare most of the problems involved suppose we start with a cup of coffee uh, which is cold and we want to warm it up to a certain temperature how much heat is necessary that will be an example of an unsteady closed process that's a process so you'll notice how things simplify if we are just considering a process which is a typical uh, you know problem involves that so again we start with our general equation of mass energy and entropy these are in their you know most general form but we understand it's a closed system so immediately all the mass terms will drop out right all the mass transfer terms so let's let's go see that so mass transfer terms drops out here's a big simplification so now what we got so once we drop out this mass terms if we multiply both side by dt then look what we get we are multiplying both side by dt of course the mass mass equation becomes trivial mass remains constant in a closed system no mass is coming in or going out and the energy equation look at the differential form we just multiply by dt both sides in other words what it is saying is that in in, in little time 
T, uh, you know, how much the energy, the stored energy of the system change. Answer is that the amount of heat that entered in this little time and the amount of work that went out, the difference between the two is the change in energy. Same with entropy. But our goal is not the differential equation here. We really want to figure out how the energy changes from the beginning to the final state. So for that, we all you have to do is to integrate this from our beginning state to final state. And the animation already does that. So if you move up, move forward, you will see that the, the integration is carried out term by term. So what you get on the left hand side is delta E, which is delta E is nothing but E2 minus E1 obviously is delta T, delta E, and delta S is S2 minus S1, capital, these are capitals. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, the change in energy is given by the amount of heat that comes in minus the work that is going out. Please try to understand that physically. This, this, this simple equation, it's an algebraic equation, it just says that if I have a closed system and say 10 amount of heat comes in and two amounts of work goes out, then really eight amount of energy got accumulated in the system, stored in the system. Same with entropy. If it says that, you know, the heat that comes in brings with it this much amount of entropy and the friction inside create that much of entropy. Together, there must be the change in entropy. Notice that in an open steady system, the, all the units were per, on the basis of per second, but here we integrated over time, so there is no kilowatt. Instead of that, the energy unit is kilojoule. <clears throat> Again, well, the final equations can be visualized through a flow diagram. So for instance, if you go to the you know, energy flow diagram, that means it shows that within the system how the energy can accumulate because heat is coming in and work is going out. The difference is what is getting accumulated. So the equation makes immediately physical sense. That is delta E equals Q minus W external. That's our energy equation. Similarly, if you go to the entropy flow diagram, uh, you will see that it shows the intuitive concept that heat that comes in uh, at the bottom, the heat that is coming in here is carrying entropy. And of course, friction inside can generate entropy. And together, and together, that's what they're causing that rise in entropy of the system. So to summarize, we can write down that the energy equation and entropy equation for a closed system is given by, for a closed process, is given by delta E equal Q minus W external. And of course, you understand that delta E being equals delta U plus delta KE plus delta PE, right? Because, because E equals U plus KE plus PE. So you, you recognize that if KE and PE are negligible, change in KE and PE, then the equation becomes delta U equals Q minus W external. Needless to remind you that W external is made up of shaft, electrical, and boundary work. And the units are kilojoule, not kilowatt here, because it's over the process, how much heat is added, how much work is coming out, etc. So this becomes our energy equation. And what is our entropy equation? Delta S equal Q divided by TB plus Sgen. Again, just to remind you, the TB represents the boundary temperature. And if the boundary temperature encompasses a bigger than the system, it includes the surroundings, then Sgen becomes Sgen universe. So let's, let's just give a very quick example of how to analyze without going into any numbers. Let's say we're going to warm up a cup of coffee. So, uh, 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 and, and for that matter, you know, instead of, okay, suppose we, we want to warm up a cup of coffee and the question is, you know, let's say from 10 degrees Celsius, we want to warm it up to uh, 50 degrees Celsius. And the question is mass is given to us let's say 0 0.5 kg and we want to know how much heat is required we are going to heat it up 
this is just a symbolic way of showing what we are doing here. The energy could come from microwave, which is also another kind of heat transfer, but let's directly heat the coffee mug. So we know how much energy is needed. The analysis will be simple. Delta E equals Q minus W external. Obviously, you don't see any shaft work, electrical work, etc. Work goes to zero. The change in Ke and Pe are negligible. So we can write delta U equals Q. In other words, Q equals delta U, which means U2 minus U1. Simplifying, it becomes mass times small u2 minus u1 at which point it becomes our work to figure find a way to de, de, you know find an equation for u2 minus u1 that brings up modeling the problem of course if we want to include the cup getting heated it gets complicated and most of the time the wall of the system is considered a non-participant uh, in case of a coffee mug that may not be a great assumption but in most engineering systems uh, the working fluid is what you, you are after. So in that case, it will be the mass of, for instance, which is very true when you microwave, the, wa the water in the coffee absorbs the energy. So really the coffee mug directly doesn't. Uh, so if you know the mass of the amount of water, all you have to do is to figure a way out to find U2 minus U1. And for that, we'll go after a specific model. And if you use the SL model, you know that we have done that many times in chapter three, it will be simply CV T2 minus T1. So therefore, all we need is the value of CV for water, and we can figure out how much heat is added. I, I leave it for you to complete the rest of the problem, but we'll solve a more elaborate problem in the next module.